All right, now let's tackle the, the fourth and last uh, algorithm for anomaly de detection, and that's isolated force. Isolated force is very fast, and we're going to see it during the coding exercise. It's also accurate, and it will work with large data sets. There's no feature scaling needed here, for example. Yeah, you, just, you just split it, and there's no need to calculate distances which protects you against the curse of dimensionality and um, it's also more memory friendly to your machine. To, uh, to show you the, the basic idea I have drawn a little grid here with two features x1 and x2 and point A is an anomaly and it's very clear that it is easy to isolate. I only need one split to split A from the rest. And then we have a point B here surrounded by these four points. Well here I will need more splits. One, two, three, four. Four. Yeah? So you see that I need a lot more splits. Huh? So B, I need four splits. Is one, one, two, one, two, three, four. Whereas A, I got one split and I have A. Yeah. So that's the idea. Just for you to remember, this is a tree. We call this the root. The root starts with n samples. Yeah. And then it's a binary tree because you have a left and a right. The nodes at the end we call external nodes and the nodes, all the other nodes, we call internal nodes. So there's n external nodes and there is n minus 1 internal nodes. Now let's get to the algorithm. Yeah? And we will start with random forest. And we've seen random forest. You have a data set D. What you do is you subsample and you create n data sets on which you will build a tree. Yeah? Uh, and of course you subsample with replacement. Now the size of these di's is the same size as d. We've seen that as well. Yeah? So once you have your, your data sets, you're going to build trees resulting in a model h1 to hn. And um, the way we're going to uh, split is you're going to split right through the end. So for every D you're going to split right until the points are isolated. So you're clearly overfitting. Another feature is that you only split on K features. And K is smaller than D. If, if you have D features, you only split uh, uh, on a subset of D. And every time you, you split, it could be a different K. Yeah? And then at the end, your classifier is just the average of all your classifiers. Now, isolated forests, I forest, basically work the same way. There's some little tweaks. Yeah? First tweak is that you're not going to the end. You're not splitting all the way down. Um, and why is that? Well, because we just said that anomalous points are isolated a lot faster than normal points. So you could actually uh, set a limit on how deep you want to go with the tree. This will help with what we call reduce uh, swamping and masking. These are two fancy words for false positives and false negatives. Yeah. And then the second thing is, when we have our classifier, when we have our trees, yeah, uh, the system is going to calculate the path lengths for every point in every tree. So you have tree number one, your point A could be uh, four, four splits or four nodes. But in, uh, in data set two, this same point A, it could take five nodes. Path length could be five nodes. 
Yeah? So you do this for every point in every tree, and then at the end, you average across the trees for every point. Yeah? So you average the path length for each point. It's not node, it's point. Yeah? Across all trees. For each point across all trees. Yeah? So the path length is the number of nodes between your root and your points. And the average path length will be a measure for your anomaly score. The shorter the path length, the higher the anomaly score. And actually you can rank. So that's it. That is our, our last algorithm. Um, very popular isolated forest. 